it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and welcome back to part two of my Entertainment Center series. Today I'm going to show you how I built this simple pocket door cabinet, which is actually, if you saw the last video, just a small part of this much bigger piece. This large entertainment center, I guess you would call it, is actually built for our local library. I've built this piece in four separate sections and I'll be covering each piece in three videos that'll be back to back in the upcoming weeks. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of those. But we're gonna cover this one today. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. If you saw the last video, I shared how I built this six drawer dresser as kind of the base of this large entertainment piece. But today I want to show you how I built these two outer cabinets that go on each side. As you can tell, they were super simple, but the pocket doors that slide into the cabinet are a nice touch that was a little unexpected. So if you're ready to get building, I've got the plans linked below and I'll show you how it came together in this video. You'll notice that the first part of this project looks very similar to the dresser build. I used 2x2s for the frame and 3 quarter inch plywood for the side panels. I built the dresser and these cabinets so that they would match, so the measurements are the same for the side panels as well. Once I had my 2x2 two two legs and plywood cut down to size, I assembled these two side panels. In the dresser build, I used pocket holes and screws for this since they were covered, but with this project I used dowels instead so you wouldn't see the pocket holes when you open the doors. If you wanted, you could still use pocket holes here and just plug them or even get fancier with another joinery method. There's plenty of ways to join these together. As long as you end up with two side panels, you'll be fine. Once the glue was dry on these sides, I assembled the remainder of the cabinet frame using 2x2s. Just like with the dresser, I assembled this with pocket holes and screws. This is actually the footage from assembling the dresser frame. You'll notice the pocket holes here. And I used this exact same process for the pocket door cabinets, only the frame pieces were cut slightly shorter. And again, just like the dresser, once the frame was all glued up and screwed together, I nailed on some one by two trim pieces and cove molding along the sides. That's an optional step. I just thought that it looked a little nicer with this trim added. Now, finally, things start to look a little different than the dresser build from the last video. You may disagree with me and that's 100% your right to do so, but I really don't like adding backs onto my dresser builds for a few reasons. So I didn't add one onto my last build, but this piece needed a back installed since it would open up. I could have just stapled the back directly onto the 2x2 frame, but I used a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit with my router to route out a groove to place the quarter inch plywood backer down into so that it would be flush across the back. Once I had routed the groove, I used a chisel to clean up the corners and make them square. And then I could cut to fit a quarter inch piece of plywood and I stapled it into this groove. Next, it was time to add a bottom into this cabinet. I cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood to fit inside the bottom frame and drilled pocket holes along the edges. Then I screwed this piece in place in the bottom of the cabinet so that it was flush with the top of the frame pieces. At this point, it's best to go ahead and finish the inside however you wish, so I went ahead and painted everything white to match the dresser frame from the last video. Once the paint was dry, it was time to start adding everything that will go inside the cabinet. First was the doors. You could use my tutorial to build a panel door for this project to dress it up a little bit, but I simply cut my doors from plywood for a solid panel style door. Now I installed these doors using pocket door hardware so that they would open up and slide back into the cabinet. 
This was a nice touch, but there was a bit of a learning curve. I'll link the exact hardware that I used below. The instructions that come with them were very well written and easy to follow. You have two slides per door. One is installed at the bottom and one at the top. The instructions tell you exactly where to place the slides based on the thickness of your door and whether it's inset or overlay. In my case, my doors were three quarter inch thick and they were inset, so the slides were one inch inset. Once the slides were installed into the cabinet, I cut a piece of scrap one x four to screw between the slides, just like shown. Now I had to drill the concealed hinge holes in my doors and install them onto the slides. This is where I had a couple issues. I did want to tell you about one issue that I ran into and I don't know if it was the specific hinges that I used or if it's just a universal issue. But technically I'm supposed to have about an eighth of an inch gap between the edge of the door and the side of the cabinet frame. But I ended up being closer to a quarter of an inch even though I moved my concealed hinge hole as far in as possible. That should have moved the door as far out as possible and it did, but I still ended up with a pretty big gap. So just a note, you'll either have a really big gap or maybe you wanna try a different kind of hinge, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I ran into. Um, but I did move my hole as far in as possible to still allow the door to swing all the way open. If you move it too far in, the door will only open partial and you can't slide it all the way in. But according to the instructions, I should have drilled my hinge cup holes five millimeter from the door edge. I did this on a few test pieces first, and that ended up leaving about a quarter of an inch between the cabinet frame and the door. Typical gaps should have been about an eighth of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, so I tried to move my hinge cup hole further in to the door to narrow the gap, but my concealed hinge jig only goes to five millimeter. So I ended up removing the base plate and trying six millimeter, and I figured out that that's about as far in as I could drill the hole and the door would still open up all the way on the hinge. It made no noticeable difference in the gap between five millimeter and six millimeter. And long story short, it doesn't look like there's many options to make this gap much smaller. It is what it is. And the gaps between the cabinet frame and the door is about a quarter of an inch versus the eighth of an inch I typically go for, which means that the door is pushed all the way into the center of the cabinet. So I ended up having to trim a little off each door to leave a full eighth of an inch gap between them and the center. I've noted this in the plans linked below, but that's the issue that I ran into installing these. Once the hinges were attached to the door, I used the included screws to attach the hinges onto the slides. Besides the gap issue, these were really easy to install and they work really well. I highly recommend them if you don't mind the minor gap issue, but they are a little pricey. Hardware kind of always is, I suppose. Once the doors were installed, it was time to add what I like to call the guts of the cabinet. So all the shelving inside. Typically, I would just use shelf pins to drill holes for adjustable shelves, but since these doors slide into the cabinet, I basically had to build a cabinet inside the cabinet in order to install the shelf. First, I used some scrap 2x4s at the top here. I could have used 2x2s, but I was lazy and just didn't want to cut them in half, so I just used the whole 2x4. I simply pocket hole screw them in between the frame at the top, leaving about 3 inches open on the sides. These blocks are only here to secure the next piece that I added. I installed three quarter inch plywood panels between the bottom cabinet panel and these two x four blocks using wood screws. Notice that I stained them before installing because it would have been really difficult to do so after the fact. I kept double checking throughout the process that the doors had enough room to open and slide inside. Leaving about three inches between the inside and the outside panels seemed to work pretty well. Once these two panels were installed, it was time to add the top. Just like with the last dresser build, I cut a three quarter inch plywood top for this, edge banded it, stained it, and then installed it onto the cabinet using two inch wood screws through the top frame pieces. And the final part of the project was adding the shelf. I drilled shelf pin holes into the sides to place an adjustable shelf without interfering with the doors. You'll also notice that at this point I had removed the doors on the project and decided to paint them white. I thought that it looked a little bit less busy in the overall project versus the stained doors. Once the paint was all dry, I reinstalled the doors and again, just like the dresser build, the library requested that these doors lock as well. They wanted these doors to be able to lock. 
Instead of having to lock each individually, I ended up putting the lock on just one door and I just put a small scrap wood plate behind the other door. So once this door is locked, that plate keeps this door from opening and I just had to use one lock. And also just like the dresser from the last video, these locks have a tab that rotates 90 degrees. So I basically just cut a little slot in the back of this so that when I close this door, I can turn that lock and it goes into that slot. After a little distressing and some clear coat poly, these cabinets were done. These make great little standalone storage cabinets, but also look nice as the in sections of this larger piece. Don't forget if you want to build your own, I've linked the plans and the links to the hardware used in the description below. And if you're wanting to build the entire entertainment center, I'll be sharing the final piece of the puzzle next week, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.